I'm Dr. Robert Gordon, the ship's dental officer. I'll be getting off at San Diego, my tour of sea duty over. I've enjoyed my association with people like Dr. Collins, one of the ship's medical officers, and with the other officers. Friendship is one of the many pleasant features of Navy life. My whole tour had been very interesting so far. I got to thinking about another time when the Navy and I were pretty new to each other. It was toward the close of the term after four years at dental school. Commander Arnold, a dental officer, had come to talk to our graduating class about something that left a big impression on us the career program of the Navy Dental Corps. A number of us were already in the Naval Reserve, and I was about to go on active duty. I wanted to know what was in store for me on my first assignment. Be glad to answer any questions I can, Mr. Gordon. Robert Gordon, Mr. Gordon. I just wonder, Commander Arnold, if you have any idea of the type of duty I'll have and where I'll be. Well, of course, I haven't seen your orders, so I can't say specifically, but I think you'll be sent to one of the big training centers, such as San Diego. Oh, Anne, may I present Commander Arnold? Mrs. Gordon, Commander. How do you do, Mrs. Gordon? Hello, Commander. I think I can guess what you want to know, Mr. Gordon. In most places where you serve, you can usually take your family with you. Even when you're on sea duty, you usually have a great deal of time ashore with your family. Can I answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank All you, right, sir. Boy. You're welcome. Nice to know you, Mrs. Gordon. This was pleasant to hear, because Anne and I had been married only a year, and we didn't want to be separated. I was ordered to a large naval training center. Assignment, the dental clinic. You're in the Navy now, Dr. Gordon. Captain, this is Dr. Gordon. Welcome aboard, Dr. Gordon. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to be here. Thank you, Commander. We're glad to have you young officers with us, the 12 in your group. I see you're assigned to work with Commander Jason. He's a fine officer. I know you'll enjoy working with him. I'm sure I will, sir. Your indoctrination class to start Monday, so you'll have plenty of time to get settled. Have you found a place to live yet? Not yet, sir. I suggest that you check with the base housing office. Perhaps they'll be able to help you find what you want. Here, let me try right now. Be seated, Doctor. For several weeks, I attended classes in military indoctrination. Two of my friends in the class were interns at the nearby Naval Hospital. When my indoctrination ended, I went to work with Commander Jason at the clinic. That meant a busy job, because the clinic never lacked for patients of all types. 
Marines, Waves and Navy men, all reported here for treatment. They brought with them most of the dental problems in the book. During the first year, I had the opportunity to observe, assist, and carry out treatment of my own in all fields of dentistry. this period, I had the advantage of working with an experienced senior officer. Regularly, I stood watch as dental duty officer. This can be very demanding at times. This is Dr. Gordon. This is George Hopkins at Medical. We have an accident casually with facial injuries. Could you come over and take a look? Of course, I'll be right over. Chief, I'll be with Dr. Hopkins at Medical Receiving. Looks like a fractured mandible. Can we move him to dental for x-rays and emergency treatment? Yes, we've taken care of his other injuries. He can be moved now. I checked for hemorrhage and for any discrepancies in occlusion. The x-ray showed a fracture, as I'd thought. I wrote his orders and sent him over to the ward. The next morning, Commander Jason looked over my report in the log. I felt pretty good when he gave me a well done. Anne and I were both happy in the house we'd found. The place was comfortable, and we had pleasant neighbors, like the Thomases next door. Hi. Hi, Anne. Hi, Bob. Hi. Hi, Jim. Jim was a Marine pilot. I heard an evil rumor that you got promoted. As of yesterday, you're no longer entitled to full rank on me. Uh, congratulations, Bob. Thanks, Jim. Let's go with the club tonight. What's down those new strikes? Hey, that's a good idea. Let's have dinner there. How about it, girls? Wonderful. Well, come on, sit down. What are you going to wear? Oh, I have a new dress. Wait until you see it. It's beautiful. How's that new baby coming? Let's take a look. Little Brian was doing all right. We had a fine time at the club that night. Before the evening was over, quite a few of my friends had dropped in to congratulate me and to have a drink on me. With that brand new stripe, I didn't mind paying at all. After two years at the training center, I got my first sea duty. I was assigned to the dental department aboard the USS Toledo, one of the Navy's heavy cruisers. We were part of the Pacific Fleet. During my tour of duty, the ship took part in several large-scale task force exercises. 
This combined action is very impressive. Carriers, jet aircraft, cruisers, destroyers, submarines, only a suggestion of the available power of one part of our fleet. We had time to visit ashore at places I'd always heard about. Tokyo, Hong Kong, and the famous beach at Waikiki. Not every cruise was a sea-going picnic. The sea hasn't been tamed yet. During my period of sea duty, I was often reminded of what Commander Arnold had said that day on the campus when Anne and I were so worried about being separated. He was right. I really had a good deal of time to spend with my family. In fact, I was home when Rupi was born. Now, there was one more rooting for our future. It had been a full and exciting tour, but now it was over, and I was heading for home port. One of the joys of going to sea is the fun of coming home. to spend most of it relaxing. Did I hear somebody say, busman's holiday? On Sundays, we attended chapel services with many of our friends. On one particular Sunday, Anne and I had a little problem to discuss as we drove home. My Uncle Jeff was coming to visit us. We had a pretty good idea why he was coming. Anne, that was a lovely luncheon. So much fun to have you here, Uncle Jeff. Bob, I don't remember whether you smoke these. I most certainly do, when Anne lets me. I'll give you a special dispensation this time. I must say, you both look very happy. Of course we, we are, are, Uncle Jeff. Jeff. I've an inkling you know why I'm here. I'm getting along in years, and I want to retire. And you want me to take over your practice? That's what I've always planned. You did, too, when you started out in dental school. Uncle Jeff, I, uh... You don't have to tell me. I can read the signs. You like the Navy Dental Corps. I do, Uncle Jeff. I've given it a lot of thought over the past year. I like the Navy, the travel, the security, the challenges. I feel that my future is with the Dental Corps. Besides, the pay is good. As long as you're happy in your work, Bob, you know that's what really counts. And speaking as a fellow dentist, I know all about the high standards of dentistry in the Navy. I've seen the career educational program. Very modern and impressive. I'll be seeing it in action. Bethesda is going to be my next assignment. I'm going there for postgraduate work next week. I'm anxious to see the facilities. Bob, I wish you nothing but the best of luck in your career. Now I've got to be getting along to the airport. My plane leaves at 4 o'clock. Oh, we have time for a little drive before you get there. Good.
On the way to the airport, we made a point of driving through the station to show Uncle Jeff a few more reasons why I like it in the Navy. We drove by the golf course. I'd been spending a lot of my leave there trying to break 80. That's Commander Shaw, one of my shipmates off the Toledo. Lately, he's been playing in the low 70s. Just as well I wasn't with him that afternoon. And Uncle Jeff agreed that the swimming pool at the officers' club looked inviting. I'm sure Uncle Jeff sincerely felt that I'd found my future in the Navy. While I was on sea duty, Anne had met Ruth Bingham, whose husband was a retired dental officer and was now on the staff of the State University School of Dentistry. I was anxious to meet Captain Bingham, who had spent 30 years in the dental corps. Both he and his wife turned out to be wonderful people. I'm sorry they aren't here. I'm sure you'd enjoy meeting them. These are your children. That's right. Betty's married and Sue's taking graduate work at UCLA. Where did you get this lovely vase? Oh, George picked it up in Hong Kong in 1935 when he was with the Marines. We have a whole collection of mementos from different places he's been. I like this statuette from Africa. Even if George does insist, it looks like me. <laughs> It's a nice home you have, and a place at Arrowhead, too. Not bad. Well, you'll have it, too, if you spend 30 years in the Navy the way I did. My salary, my retirement pay did a, a lot to help pay for this. 30 years? I've got a long way to go. <laughs> It'll go a lot faster than you think. If you're like me, you'll enjoy every minute of it. For one thing, the uh, Dental Corps has one of the most modern dental research uh, programs in the world. That's a good stimulus for a dental officer who wants to make the most of his profession. Well, you'll see for yourself when you get to Bethesda next week. I understand you're going to take postgraduate work, is that right? That's right. Um, looking forward to seeing the dental school, too. Incidentally, uh, I'll be visiting an old friend of mine, Captain John Arnold. Did you ever run into him? John Arnold? Well, you bet I do know him. He's a mighty fine fella. He and I were on a Mediterranean cruise together. I know John. And by the way, I wonder what you two did on Liberty in Naples. I've been wanting to ask that for a long time. 20 years, to be exact. <laughs> I could see that the Binghams were happy people. I hoped we'd make the same good impression in later years when we met young dental officers and their wives. The National Naval Medical Center is something to see. The educational program here is world famous. I'd heard about it way back in my freshman year at dental school. I called on Captain Arnold as soon as I arrived. Our paths had crossed several times since that first day we met on the campus. He took me on a tour of the Naval Dental School to help me get squared away before I started classes. He spoke with the greatest enthusiasm about the postgraduate program. Bob, these officers are oral surgeons and prosthodontists. They're both concerned with the dental rehabilitation of this patient. The surgeon prepares the mouth. And the prosthodontist will insert the immediate denture. In the field of diagnosis, we have a complete oral pathology division, which evaluates biopsy specimens. This provides the entire dental corps with a diagnostic service of great importance. We use some of the latest equipment available to the profession. Here, for example, the air turbine operated handpiece. And the most modern visual training aids, such as this giant size articulator. Meet Mr. Disaster, one of the most famous characters in the dental corps. He's the hero of the mass casualty training program, Bob.
No matter how much you make him bleed, he never complains. We're also making use of closed circuit television in this studio to augment our postgraduate instruction. This medium helps us to educate faster and more effectively. We've had very successful results with this small portable television equipment. This can be set up for special demonstrations at a moment's notice. In these laboratory spaces, our active research supports both clinical treatment and studies that carry us far into the future. Of course, one of our continuing clinical problems is dental caries. We're working on it through many different approaches. For one, better restoration of lost tooth structure. Another, the investigation of the mechanics of caries through chemical means. In connection with clinical investigations, we're working on the development and evaluation of new instruments. We test rotary instruments under varying conditions to determine their reliability for field use. Radioisotopes are a modern tool being used in dental research. By using a radiation counter to examine a prepared blood sample, we can tell precisely how much blood is lost in any given procedure in oral surgery. And now, Bob, let me show you something else. Our research in Antarctica is also active. This exhibit was prepared in connection with our part in support of the International Geophysical Year. At our Antarctic bases, dental officers are analyzing the effects of extreme cold on oral structures and dental materials. Not all research is limited to dental matters. We're interested in dental problems associated with environmental stress. These become more and more important as men work and live in confined areas in both submarines and outer spaceships. Oh, Bob. It's certainly been fine to see you again. I appreciate all the time you've spent with me. It's been a pleasure. Just hope you got something out of it. Oh, I sure did. I'll tell you one thing. I can understand now why some people say the Navy has its eyes on the present and the future. That's good enough. As a postgraduate officer, I worked hard during the following months and found it very stimulating. There was no doubt that I was being benefited professionally. A month before the course ended, I got wonderful news. Just what I had hoped for. excited as I was, and from the noise little Brian and Ruthie were making, I think they somehow got the message too. A few weeks later at our pre-graduation inspection, Anne and the kids managed to find a spot nearby to watch the head of the family on parade. Captain Arnold was in the inspecting party. Glad to have you with us, Dr. Gordon. Glad to be aboard, sir. 